Yeah. <laughs> Ow. I, I love Martinsville. So going there is, just makes me happy. Uh, again, like Darlington, it's just two hours up the road. I've been there just as a fan and stayed for cup races after I've ran truck races in the past. So really felt like at ease going up there for that race last fall. Uh, knew we just needed to keep the points gap like somewhat reasonable. Thought a top 10 day would be fine. We ran 10th in both stage one and stage two and realized uh, we're now like basically tied. Like we have to finish better than 10th. Um, and we were 10th place car. Like there's no way around it. There was there was nothing I could, I, I couldn't go faster than getting beat by nine other cars. So the last half of that race or last third of that race was tough to just be stuck there. The final pit stop, our guys did a great job, gained spots and our competition lost spots and we got to restart ahead of them. And then a bit of bumper tag, a uh, bit much for, for my liking and high risk. Um, Phil's on the radio yelling uh, to get back to neutral. Um, that's just a, a thing that I, I do of just not being too aggressive, but also not being too sad. So not being too mad or sad. Uh, I'm just trying to stay in the middle of neutral that got me back reined in but then we just didn't have the speed and we stayed in our whatever spot we were running in with five to go again like I said earlier tears running out of my face five to go at Martinsville we're, we're out I know that we're out and with the white flag the thought of running the wall popped into my head Brandon said white flag need two something like that I checked and turns one and two on the radio that we had to get them had to get them and Phil said, yeah. Yeah, I got to get him. Me too. Get him. And I'll never forget those words because it solidified my belief. And it's right as I came off turn two and looking down the back stretch, I just picked a spot on the wall. Uh, and that's ultimately what led to the to the Hail Melon. No preparation other than the final lap. No simulator. Trying it, testing it, talking to the engineers, talking to my crew chief, talking to any other driver about what it would be like. And... I think that's why I decided to do it because I, I didn't have any reasons why not and all the reasons of why I should uh, to give my give us a shot um, I felt like our chance at Phoenix had just been ripped away from us at the last moment um, we had done everything right through the playoffs and through the side from the Roval and through that round transferred through with two second place finishes and it was all gonna be gone and if I crashed, if I wrecked the car, if I don't make it through that corner, okay, we were out anyways. Um, but it was worth the risk, and, and I trusted the car and the, and the track that it'd be okay. Hail Marys don't always work. How did it feel to pull one off? Well, it's, it's a really good thing I'm not trying to throw a football for a Hail Mary, first of all, because that would never make it. But in the race car, it, it felt good. I mean, in the moment, I come off turn four, I see the 11 out my window net, I run into the six car. I know that we've just done it. I know that I got, but I couldn't totally accept that it was real and that it was gonna be allowed to happen by the league. Uh, you know, I just, I don't know what it looks like from an optics perspective. I flash back as I'm in one and two to Indianapolis and the uh, turn one runoff lane I took and I still don't think I broke that rule, but I got penalized 30 seconds and that took me from second to tail car and lead lap. So if they do that again, we're out. So I was pretty calm. I asked my crew to please talk to me. It was dead silent on the radio and Phil starts yelling that we made it. You made the, the points updated you on TV, transfer, we're in. Uh, but I had a lot of yelling in the car right away. Uh, a lot of just going crazy, fist pumping in the car. Coming down pit road, the right front suspension is broken. But pit crew members are coming out of their stalls and high-fiving me, waving, thumbs upping. Justin runs up, David runs up. Some of them are excited. David doesn't really know what's going on. He's telling me like, stay calm. He thinks I just crashed the field. Like I ran into other cars. So um, there was a lot of mixed signals coming my way and there was a lot of mixed emotions inside. So I got out, I was, 
calm and I just w kept looking around for an official to like come up and tell me hey that ain't gonna fly the the tower said no they're penalizing you 30 seconds and the more we stood there Philip showed me the video so I watched the video like it didn't look real and I just kept waiting and after a couple of minutes it kind of sunk in that okay and then TV came up and I'm asking them like have they said anything or and no no word from the tower and I'm like all right, if we're doing this interview, I'm going to I'm gonna take this as we're good. Um, so it felt good to pull off a Hail Mary. And then even more special was that it got dubbed a Hail Melon. Just so cool that the media would take that and I think Jeff Gluck did it and tie it back to my family's livelihood of farming watermelons. Like anytime I can talk about agriculture, I'm all for it. And the fact that this time I didn't have to bring it up uh, and watermelons were a part of the conversation was so cool.